Hi guys. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day today. Praise the Lord. He is so good and faithful and merciful and righteous. And uh, I, uh, <clears throat> so I'm just going to just start talking. <laughs> I don't talk that good, but I know you guys forgive me. So, um, so I had put that little uh, music video up. Uh, oh, Sherry. I got a lot of guff for that. Some, some people liked it. Some people didn't. But that's okay. But uh, in between the Moses dreams, um, I heard the Lord speak to me to put that up. And um, what was going on <clears throat> be, uh, because of that. And it wasn't about the rapture, you guys. It just was kind of weird how it just went with it. <laughs> um, the reason why I put it up was because there's this dear sister that's really, um, the Lord kind of led us together. Well, he did. He led us together so I could get the revelation of um, saved by faith through grace and get the revelation that there's nothing that you can do to earn your salvation because the Lord already earned it for you with his work on the cross. So I struggle with that. <clears throat> I struggled like um, the more I do, the more God's going to love me or the more, you know, and we all, I don't know, when we struggle with it. I know I'm not the only one um, because it's such a, a, uh, the, and the devil doesn't want you to know the truth. I'll just say that. The devil does not want you to know the truth. That that is how we enter in to the kingdom. Um, when the Lord said, Behold, I give you an open door. Um, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, no one can enter in but by me. Uh, and what did he do for us? He, he died on the cross. And he said, it is finished. And the devil doesn't want you to get that revelation that, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of people in the, the churches and the church buildings that, you know, it's nice. They, you know, they run something or they, or I don't know what I'm saying about that. But there's a lot of people that haven't had the revelation of that. And, um... They think that works is going to get them to heaven, but what they're really doing is they're still living by the law. They're still living by the law of Moses. And when the Lord appeared to me in that dream and he said, I am Moses. I am the one that is going to free my people or free my people or lead my people out of bondage. What he was saying was, I died on the cross. There's no more Moses. You see what I mean? I am the one. And my work, basically my work, I mean there's multiple messages in that, but but my work that I did on the cross is sufficient for everybody. And so when I read through the book of Romans, I mean it just blows me away because we're the Romans. We're the Greeks and the Romans. And uh, the Lord died for us. And when someone has it in their mind that they're not good enough or they have to do this or they have to do that to be found worthy. If you believe on him and you have faith by his grace, by his work on the cross, you're, you're saved. It's already been done. The, the, the wages have already been paid. Like the Lord had me, uh, gave me a vision and he was standing on a balance scale. And he said, have I not weighed many feet in the balance? When he died on the cross, he, he weighed many feet in the balance. He gave those wages already for your life. And so the devil would have us live miserably through our whole entire life thinking we're not worthy. We haven't done enough. Blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. Whatever. And we're just miserable of it because we live our life not in faith. We live our life, you know, just solely on works. 
And the works that we're supposed to be doing are the works of the Spirit. Love, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness. And the two laws that, that hang on all the laws that he ever gave are love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. To those two commandments, rest all the other commandments on top of it. And with those laws, uh, with with those commandments, you know, there is no law. So a lot of us uh, get wrapped up, and and uh, you know, when when um, we just we live in this constant state of we have to do like with our hands all these. And we nitpick on our families, too, and we nitpick on other people, and we nitpick on other people on YouTube, and we start cursing those people, like, <laughs> when they when you say, when they come to you and say, that's not blah, 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 and they start, you know, just jumping down on your throat and everything. Um, those people don't have the revelation of God's love. They don't have that that revelation yet to where it is finished and uh, the things that we're going to be judged by by the Lord is did we love the Lord God with all our heart our soul and our strength and did we love our neighbor as ourselves were we good to one another you know were we forgiving to one another were we long suffering were we kind? Did we love the Lord? I mean, that's basically what it boils down to. And once we have that revelation, now see that, and so the devil was trying to get me not to um, talk to my dear friend because um, about that stuff. I mean, I wrestle with it. This was me. This picture right here. This was me right here. I was wrestling with the angel every night. I mean, I was saying, no, Lord. That can't be right. That can't be right. And it is right. And as soon as I accepted this, um, the Lord's been showing me all kinds of things. Like yesterday I was driving and um, I was just, I was asking the Lord about something and immediately he showed me the answer. But before I couldn't move, I couldn't move forward because he was still dealing with me about something else. He's like, how are you going to get the answer for this if you're still wrestling with that? And that's how good the Lord is, and that's how much he loves us, because he wants us to come to a full understanding about his love for us and what he did. A full revelation of what he did for us, for the ones that accept him and love him and love their neighbor and accept faith through grace. grace through faith so I was going to read scripture so Ephesians 2 8 9 says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast so let's say you have someone working in church and and we've all seen it. Oh, they come and clean the church. And you know how and when you're in the church building, they esteem certain people. And then they don't never pay attention to the other people. They're just people that sit there, you know, and tithe. Or the pastor won't give you any positions. See, this is why the Lord eliminated all this stuff. You're not supposed to be doing that type of stuff to other people like Think about, because I used to see, um, I used to pray and say, well, Lord, I want to work too. I want to work in the, the house of the Lord and help run the food bank and come clean the church and, you know, uh, go around and eat with, be privileged to eat at the pastor's house and all this stuff, you know, and it's a brainwash. It really is. It's, it, it, it stumbles that person. It's a stumbling block the way um, most of these churches are set up. And so if you're that lowly, uh, broken spirit of person sitting in the pews and, and you see everybody else being put their 
They're being worshipped. They're like self-righteous. The Lord hates that. He doesn't like that because it's, it's a slap in the face to him of his work on the cross. And that's just the way I see it. That's this was like a little mini download. And my friend wanted to know the dream because she, uh, about the song I posted, she said, well, how did you know? Because I was praying to the Lord that, because we were having this struggle, you know. And um, there was no dream. I just heard her name in my mind and I heard that song. And the Lord said, post this up there. And so I was obedient and that was it. And it bore witness to her prayer life about me through the Lord. And and uh, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I posted it and just didn't care what anyone thought. But so, yeah, so that's what, that, what I've been going through is just really grasping God's love and his his uh, work on the cross that I don't have to do anything to earn my salvation because it's already done. It's already done. And uh, so I'm going to read this other one too. Mark ten forty six through fifty two. Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. Blind Bartimaeus and son of the son of Timaeus sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many Sorry guys. The Lord's so good. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. And then that was me, you guys. <laughs> Not physically, physically blind, but spiritually blind. And the Lord is just so good. He is so good. I mean, there's no words. There is no words how much our Lord loves us and doesn't want us to live in this bondage trying to earn our way because our whole lives we're trying to earn everything with everybody else. It's like a give to get scheme, you guys. <laughs> Everybody's about a give to get scheme, but the Lord's not. He's not a schemer and he's not a man that he should lie. So anyway, so do I still believe the Lord's coming back soon? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do believe he's coming back very soon because he told me he's coming back very soon. He showed me he's coming back very soon. <coughs> Have I physically seen two suns in the sky and three moons in the sky yet? No, we haven't seen any of that stuff yet. There's people that say that there is. If you take a picture a certain way or superimpose it, which I believe it, but I believe that we'll be physically seeing it in the sky. And, uh, um, when I looked out my window during that dream, my mulberry tree had no leaves. So, you guys, I'm not putting a date on anything. 
most of the days that the Lord shows me, I just believe they're just, you know, because he told me the tribulation is about to begin. So I just take it as the tribulation is going to begin, you know. And uh, the other days that he's given me, there ha they have been points of no return in our world. They have been. They haven't been rapture dates. They've been points uh, with what's going on in our president, with what's going o on over there, with what's going on, on in the Eastern uh, European Union. And uh, so, you know, I, if the Lord tells me something, then I believe it. I believe it. And uh, there was a reason why he let me pan over the sky and look through the, bul the mulberry tree. Had no leaves on it. And we had just got done cutting all the branches off that mulberry tree. And um, uh, it's blooming out now. You know how fast they grow. It's got some, uh, you know, a good healthy top on it now. And the branches look like they'd grown through the summer type of, type of deal before the leaves fell off. So now am I going to, are we going to see that stuff in the sky at the end of the year? Are we going to see it at the end of next year? Are we going to see it at the end of the next year after that? Is it, you know, we don't, we don't know, but, um, our faith, uh, is what gets us through and, and, and we know the Lord loves us and, and, uh, I still believe that the rapture is soon and how soon, I don't know, but anyway, Uh, I love you guys. This uh, video has gone on for a while, but I just want to share that with you guys. And I hope you're having a, a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen.